this is Diane Lee from Teach Pre-K and I will be starting my dinosaur unit in a couple of weeks. So uh, before I get it all packed up and ready to go for school, I wanted to show you some activities that I absolutely love, particularly my science activities. Um, my first one that I love is, you'll see this is just a little volcano. So every dinosaur unit, I usually like to do the letter V for volcano, but since it was just Valentine's Day and we did V, I'm still going to do a volcano. Um, we make a simple salt dough, so we do that as a center all together. We make a little batch of salt dough. I give the kids a plate with their name on it, one of these little like birthday cake plates. Um, I give them a ball of the salt dough that we just made together and I ask them to form a volcano with a crater on top. And we set these out for four or five days, maybe longer. My dinosaur unit lasts two weeks. So I have a lot of time for these to dry. Um, when they're done, we do the baking soda um, vinegar little eruption solution. And we put the baking soda in there, a couple drops of liquid watercolor or food coloring, and we just have our volcanoes erupt. So that's a few days after I keep these out to dry just in the classroom so the kids can see them and we continue talking about the volcanoes and the day we're going to make them erupt. But this is such a fun activity. Both making the volcano is fun, but the erupting, they could do it over and over and over again. They absolutely love it. It's so well worth um, my time. Another thing that I do and what I'm going to show you um, is a little plaster dinosaur fossil. So I have a lot of these like small dinosaur figurines and what I do, I had these really interesting rectangular um, little uh, applesauce cups for baby food that were donated but I ran out of those so now I use the size paper cups. It's 12 ounces and what I'll do is I'll fill, actually I'll tell you what I do first. I cut half of it off and then at the bottom, this one's cut for Groundhog Day, but in the bottom, I put some old Play-Doh or Play-Doh that's about to dry up. And then the kids come to my center and they pick their little dinosaur figurine and we smash it down into the Play-Doh. They think they're gonna get to keep this dinosaur and bring it home. No, you take the dinosaur out and I show them the imprint of their dinosaur in the Play-Doh, then I just whip up some plaster. I ordered a big box of plaster from um, Amazon or you can get it at the hardware store. And I just mix it up with water and I pour about that much on top of their dinosaur impressions. We wait for them to dry and what I love about the paper cup is I just peel it off. And then I give them a popsicle stick. As you can see, this one still has some of the Play-Doh left. Sometimes it's really hard to get the Play-Doh off. But we use a popsicle stick and Q-tips that I have on hand. And we work on getting the, um, I'm going to go a little closer, getting the Play-Doh off of our dinosaur impression. And the kids get to take home a fossil. So in one week, they get to erupt volcanoes, make fossils, take a volcano home with a little recipe on how to make it erupt and a little fossil. Um, another thing that I like to do is we talk a lot about what makes an herbivore and what makes a carnivore. So I made these little just one sheet mats. One says herbivores, one says carnivores. Then I have just some little dinosaur clip art pictures or you can go online and get real dinosaur pictures or better use your little dinosaur figurines and your little you know uh, dinosaur manipulatives and we can sort okay brontosaurus let's put that one on the herbivore mat why well it has a really long neck so it can eat leaves off of trees it has flat teeth it is an herbivore um, Ankylosaurus, it's an herbivore because it's got body armor and it also eats plants. And then we've got our T-Rex. We know it is a carnivore because it has sharp teeth, sharp claws, and it goes in the carnivore column along with our little friend Velociraptor. So we do a little bit of um, a little sort. You could also 
uh, do like just little plastic rings, hula hoops or whatever to sort out your dinosaurs if you like. But another sinus, uh, sinus, uh, science thing I really like to do is I've made these little puzzles, these herbivore carnivore puzzles. So here we have a stegosaurus and here we have plants and vegetables. So we know it's an herbivore. Same with our little brontosaurus or brachiosaurus. We've got these little two part puzzles. Um, same goes for our carnivores. We've got different meats and a dinosaur because they eat other dinosaurs and they go together. So this is a fun little activity that we do as well that goes along with a lot of our science stuff. Um, I also, I made these a long time ago. I've got a Triceratops outline and then I have uh, a little baggie that has like the bones that you could reconstruct a triceratops, a velociraptor. These are in my all about dinosaurs. Like everything you've seen is in my all about dinosaurs lesson plan. Um, yeah, so there's tri triceratops. This is a liopurodon, a uh, diplosaurus, and a velociraptor. So I've got matching little bones that you can cut out and you can put together the dinosaur bones like a real paleontologist would do. Another science activity that I made up a long, long time ago that I have to say is the favorite of the kids is I just, I mean, these are very rudimentary. I, these are like one of the first things. I think I made these my first year teaching there, so worse for wear. But here I have a velociraptor. Um, on the back, it says Velo Velociraptor. Its name means speedy thief. It is five to six feet long and it weighed 15 to 33 pounds. Then I have this piece of string on it. And this piece of string is as long as a ver Velociraptor would have been from floor to head. So from its feet to its head, sorry, upside down. That's how big the Velociraptor is. So we take turns, one person holds the pictures, the other person holds the other end of the string for this one. Then I also have, same thing for Triceratops. I have the picture. I have what it means, three horned face, 30 feet long, and how much it weighed. Another big, long length of yarn on this one. And we need several kids to do this because the string is so long. Um, we've got, I tried to do all their favorite dinosaurs, the ones that were really popular. Same thing, Stegosaurus. I've got the information. The string is as long as the Stegosaurus is. They love this one. This is the T-Rex. And it means Tyrant Lizard King. It's 40 feet high. Wait, 40 feet long, 15 to 20 feet tall. And then just some interesting facts about a T-Rex. And again, the yarn for how tall the T-Rex is, but the biggest one. Most of these we can do just out in our preschool hallway. The Triceratops gets a little iffy because um, it is really a long dinosaur, believe it or not. But I've got this guy and it is just munched. It has been in, in my little planning box forever and we've used this over and over. This guy is 80 to 85 feet from the tip of its head to the tip of its tail. This ball of string is so long. I can't even go in our school gym. I have to go down the main hallway of our school. So I like to pick a time to do this when the rest of the school has gone to an assembly. I teach the Catholic school, so sometimes they're at mass. And we will go do this. And this takes the entire class to see how long this guy is. I just set them at different um, intervals on this string. But they absolutely love that because it gives them a real idea of how big these dinosaurs were and you can do that with um blocks um those big cardboard blocks from melissa and doug would be great for doing that because you could really get the length going you could do it with a piece of string you could do it with yarn you could do like some of the smaller dinosaurs with unifix cubes and just like maybe tape the hallway off you can also line kids head to toe down a piece of tape down the hallway of how long like a T-Rex is. I like them standing up and holding the string because they can look 
from end to end and they can see how big that dinosaur really was. So those are some of my favorite science activities for your dinosaur unit, which lends itself to so much science and so much learning about measuring and about carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, all that stuff. And the kids really, really enjoy it. So I hope that gives you some ideas of what you can do in your own classroom for your dinosaur week.